I'm in the river of life. Yeah. I'm in the river of life. I swear to you, I'm in the river of life. Holy Lord, I'm in the river of life. Oh yeah, river of life. Oh God, river. Praise the Lord. God bless you. I'm Pastor Gemma Winger, and you're watching Beauty for Ashes. And we've been talking about Lazarus, how the Lord said, Lazarus, come forth. And he who was bound, he who was dead, he who was wrapped in grave clothes and a napkin around his face, right, came out and he was alive. He was healed. He was made new. And that's what the Lord wants to do for you. And John chapter 11, verse 44 is so powerful. And he that was dead, came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. Hallelujah. The Lord wants you to be set free, set free from every demonic influence, from every addiction, from every tormenting spirit that's trying to come against your mind. The Lord is saying, be loosed, loose him and let him go. Let's pray right now. Oh God, I thank you, Lord, for your anointing. I thank you, Father God, that your children are going to go all the way with you. They're not going to compromise. They're not going to take second best, Father God, that you have your best for them. And I thank you in the name of Jesus that every power of darkness is destroyed. Satan, you are ashes under our feet. And we rebuke the lies of the enemy. We rebuke every tormenting spirit in Jesus name. I thank you, Father God, that your children are going to walk in victory and health and healing and wholeness. Father God, minister to your children right now, even that one that lacks confidence. I thank you, Lord. They're going to have confidence to speak your word, to preach your word, to minister your word, Father God, even as they sing, even as they bring forth your word. Oh God, you're going to bless it. There's going to be renewal, there's going to be revival, and that your spirit is going to be unleashed and the power of God is going to be revealed in a new way. God, I thank you, Lord. You are moving and you are working in our midst. Touch, Lord. Touch, Lord. God wants to meet that very area of need. What is disturbing you? What has been bothering you? God just wants to touch it right now. He wants to pour in the oil and the wine. Hallelujah. 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 He wants to restore your soul, your spirit, your mind right now, right now in the name of Jesus. He makes all things new. Behold, he's doing a new thing even now. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. We believe. We believe. It's not by our own might, our own power, but it's by your spirit. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name. John chapter 11, verse 45. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did believed on him. So many Jews who came and they saw Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead. They saw other miracles that Jesus did. They believed 
on Jesus. And we truly know that in certain times in our lives and in certain seasons, certain moments, we know that God has spoken, that God has intervened, that God has done the impossible, that we have had a supernatural experience from the Lord, and that increases our faith. Now, some days it's just mediocre. Just be consistent. Nothing great is happening, but that's your time to build your relationship with the Lord. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Some of the Jews went and told on Jesus to the Pharisees and then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, what do we do for this man does many miracles? This is a problem for the religious leaders. They're gonna lose their following. They're gonna lose their donors. Remember, it's all about them. It's not about God and what God is doing. We see this very self-centered, narcissistic attitude. What do we do for this man does many miracles? If we let him alone, all men will believe on him. Well, what's wrong with that? Oh, then they're not going to follow the Pharisees. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and nation. So our empire, our religious um, synagogue, temple, congregation, it's going to decrease because the people are going to follow Jesus and we're not going to have as much money and we're not going to have as much influence or power and we're going to completely fall apart. And one of them named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said to them, you know nothing at all. Good for Caiaphas. He was like, you know nothing at all. You're saying, what are we going to do? This man does all these miracles. This is a huge problem. Everybody's going to believe on him. And the Romans are going to come and take away our power, our nation, our place in society, what we have. And Caiaphas says, you know nothing at all. Even in this day and age, you can hear people talk and you go, they don't get it. They don't see. They know nothing at all because they're against God. They're against the things of God. Nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not. So Caiaphas was prophesying. God was using him to prophesy. One, you don't know anything. And two, that one man needs to die for the entire nation, that the whole nation will not perish. And he was talking about Jesus has to die for the nation so that the people do not die in their sins and go to hell. And this he spoke not of himself. That was not Caiaphas speaking. That was God speaking through him. But being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. Caiaphas was prophesying. He was the high priest and God used him to prophesy to the Pharisees. God is going to use anyone. You just have to recognize the spirit of God and know whether that is God speaking or the voice of the enemy speaking. And not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. So again, gather together the Jews and the Gentiles, everyone that has grown far away from the Lord. The Lord wants to bring close. He wants to bring them into the fold and make them as one. No more Jew, no more Gentile. Then from that day forth, they took counsel together to put him to death. From that day, what did he do? He raised a man from the dead. 
and now they want to kill him. Know that as Christians, you're going to be persecuted for doing the right thing, for walking in obedience to God. Other Christians who are compromised are not going to like you, and they're going to say all manner of evil against you. But know that you are doing the right thing, and that is your religious persecution. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went to a country near to the wilderness, to a city called Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. So again, the Jews were seeking him. They were looking for him as a wanted man to take him and kill him. And that's when Jesus stepped back and kind of hid himself and ministered to his disciples. And the Jews Passover was near at hand and many went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. They went out of the country up to Jerusalem before the Passover to prepare themselves, to prepare their hearts, to get right with God. And then they sought for Jesus and spoke among themselves as they stood in the temple. What do you think? Will he come to the feast? So everybody knows that the Pharisees want to kill Jesus. And now everybody's asking, is Jesus going to show up for the Passover? And we know, hallelujah, that that Passover was where Jesus was betrayed, where Jesus was arrested, and where he crucified and died. That meal that the disciples had was the Passover meal. Now, both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a commandment that if any man knew where he was, he should show it that they might take him. So now the Pharisees are saying, if anybody knows where Jesus is, you have to tell us because we need him. We need to take him. And they wanted to kill him. In John chapter 12, verse 1, then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. So prior to that, he was there to raise Lazarus from the dead. Now he's here to eat dinner with them. There they made him a supper, and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Hallelujah. Then Mary took a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. And then... One of Jesus' disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, said, Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? The poor you always have with you. You have Jesus now. This is a special occasion. And she was there to anoint him for his burial. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And when you anoint something, you pray over it. Hallelujah. And even this oil brings the presence of the Lord. Even this oil, because it is blessed, because it is prayed over, dispels the darkness. And it's a dedication to God. And this oil signifies the fact that something has been set apart for the glory of God. This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and had the bag and bore what was put therein. So he didn't care about the poor, you know, he was a thief and he took the money that was given to Jesus' ministry. So we see here. Judas didn't all of a sudden turn into a traitor. He was a thief all along. And then he committed the most heinous crime of turning Jesus into the religious leaders. But this whole time, he's really showing 
his true colors, that he's a thief, he's a betrayer. That was the state of his heart and it came out, it showed itself through his time with Jesus, that he was stealing. So you're going to know people by their lifestyle, what they say, what they do, how compromised are they? And it is what it is. What people say, what people do is going to reflect who they are. Then said Jesus, let her alone against the day of my burying has she kept this. For the poor you always have with you, but me you do not have always. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there and they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. So now they didn't only want to see Jesus, but they wanted to see Lazarus who once was dead and now he was alive. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. So they got together and said, we want to kill Lazarus. We want to kill Jesus. We want to kill Lazarus. You know, killing things isn't going to solve your problem, right? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus will solve your problem. So we see that the chief priest consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death because that by reason of Lazarus, many of the Jews went away and believed on Jesus, right? Because of Lazarus, because of his testimony, because of what he told them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So again, the devil wants to steal kill and to destroy. But Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. There is something that is so alive growing inside of you by the spirit of God. I see like an egg and I see a chicken hatching out of that egg that you have been waiting and waiting and waiting. But that Thing, that ministry, that baby, that desire, that dream is going to come forth. The Lord is going to bring it forth. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the answer comes, it is a tree of life, meaning we're waiting for that thing to happen and it affects us. It affects our spirit. Yeah, we're praying, we're pressing in, we're standing in faith. We keep having to battle that thing. But when it comes, when it happens, it's like, thank you, Jesus. When that person who owes you money finally pays you, thank you, Jesus. When you've been praying for that healing and you get healed, thank you, Jesus. Hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when the answer comes, it is a tree of life. That answer will come in Jesus' name. And Colossians chapter 1, verse 11, that it says that we need to be strengthened with all might according to his glorious power to all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, strengthened in his power, strengthened with all might that you can keep on going, that you can get up and do what God has called you to do, strengthened according to his glorious power. That's a lot of power. And we see his power raised Lazarus, raised a man from death. We are strengthened by that power that you will go forth in greater strength, not your own power, but the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. To all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Patience and long suffering, right? That's why we need the power because we're going to have to be patient. We're going to have to suffer long. We're going to have to endure great hardship and trials and tribulations. But praise God, we're going to endure with great patience and with great joyfulness. We're going to rejoice. We're going to be joyful 
in our God. We're going to praise him. We're going to thank him. We're going to honor him. We're going to have the joy of the Lord through that difficult situation. Not our own joy, not our own power, but God's joy and God's power. And then Hebrews 9, 22, almost all things are by the law purged with blood and without the shedding of blood is no remission. Jesus shed his blood and with the shedding of his blood, you have been forgiven of your sins. You have been washed clean. You have the power to go forth and to defeat the enemy and to do what God has called you to do. So if Jesus had not died on the cross, there would be no forgiveness of sins. Hebrews 10, 23, let us hold fast the profession of our faith. Hold fast to what God has told you to do. Now, if you think that this is not God's will, then it's not God's will, right? If you're like, God is speaking to me and I know that I should not go forward with this, then you need to not go forward with it and you need to say no and you need to trust God. And it may be hurtful, it may be painful to let that thing go, let that person go, but you know deep in your heart, this is not God's perfect will. And maybe now you don't see clearly, but down the line, you are going to see clearly. God is gonna reveal it to you why he took that person out of your life. Praise Jesus. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful faithful who has promised. He has given you great and exceeding promises. He is faithful to bring them to pass. So many things have tried to come in the way. So many things have tried to stop and hinder, but he's going to bring it to fruition in his time. And Hebrews 10, 32 but call to remembrance the former days in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great fight of afflictions. Hallelujah. You know, I'll be honest, I've seen it before when all of a sudden you've come to the revelation of God and you see the truth and you know the truth, all of a sudden there's a great fight of afflictions. There are attacks of the enemy. Even that cushy life that you used to have, all of a sudden, it is no more. Each and every day is standing strong in the Lord and the power of his might and battling in the spirit, growing stronger in him, crying out to God and seeing his power revealed in greater and greater ways in your life. Again, once you were illuminated, you endured a great fight of afflictions, trials, and tribulations. And I just got to tell you, I mean, like the whole first part of my life, hallelujah, it was just one trial after another. It was just seeking the face of God to even live, to even hang on, to even get ahead, right? But there is a day coming when God will bring that life of ease. God will bring that life of blessing and there will not be all of those hindrances, all of those attacks like before. Hallelujah. We serve a mighty God. And Philippians 1.29, For to you it is given on the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. You're going to suffer for the sake of the gospel. You're going to be rejected because you're a Christian. You're not going to be included. Everybody else is going to be invited to the party and they're not going to include you because the enemy is lying about you and people are believing the lie of the enemy. So praise God for your relationship with him, but we're called to not only believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake. Even in these last days, 
People are not going to like you because you are a child of the Most High God. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection. This is Philippians 3.10. Do you truly know him? Do you have a strong relationship with him? When you know somebody, you know what they like and what they don't like. You know what they like to eat. You know what their favorite color is. You know when their birthday is. You know what they like to wear, what their style is. We need to know the Lord. And when you know the Lord, you know what is a counterfeit. You know what is not of God. You know how God acts, how he moves, how he speaks. So if you know the truth, then you truly know the error. You can recognize the error because you know God. Philippians 3, 7. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ, right? Everything in the world, it's just loss for Christ. Anything that would separate you from God, it's just loss. Yeah, you have to have a house, you have to have a car, you have to have food, you have to have money. But if it's separating you from God, then you don't want it. Let's pray right now. God, we just thank you, Lord, that you are moving and working in our lives. Oh, hallelujah. We desire more of you. Oh, I feel like there's someone who needs a healing. Father God, touch, touch. I see even the teeth, even the teeth, Father God, touch those teeth right now. Take away the pain in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, work that miracle. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Even quick testimony. Um, there was an issue with this tooth back there and a dentist uh, exacerbated it more so that all of a sudden I had pain and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and all of a sudden no pain. Praise God. So I just want to thank the Lord that he healed that tooth, that it was not his will that I walk around in pain and in suffering. So right now, Lord, touch, touch. I see that somebody has a headache. I see somebody has like malaise. They're not thinking clearly. They feel like a dullness in their mind. The Lord is sharpening you. The Lord is giving you clarity. Hallelujah. The Lord says, I'm going to do it in you and through you. You're not going to have to do it alone, but I'm going to be with you. Hallelujah. You will be my hands. You will be my feet. Step out, step out, and my glory will be seen in you. Whatever you do, whether it's a performance or singing or dancing, whatever it is, or a presentation, God says that I am going to be revealed in you and through you and that those people are going to see my light and my glory. God, touch your children right now. Thank you, Lord. The Lord says, cast not away your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. Hallelujah. Be confident. Don't belittle yourself. Don't put yourself down. Hallelujah. But go forward in his power and in his grace. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much for watching Beauty for Ashes. I love you. Jesus loves you. And it's going to be okay. I know it looks like it's a mess, but it's going to be okay in Jesus' name. God bless you. I'm Pastor Gemma Winger, and you're watching Beauty for Ashes.